Hello everyone, I'm back with another update on my version of the Ben Eater 8-bit breadboard computer, the SAP one, the simple as possible. So over the last few days I've just been trying a couple of uh, proof of concept changes to the to the breadboard computer. So that's why I have all these messy loop over wires because I was just kind of trying something out, wanted to see if it would work. And I figured if I liked it I would, you know, go back and cut wire to length and make it look all nice and pretty. But basically the program counter up here, normally you just have the uh, LEDs kind of letting you know which part of the program you're in. And I have all these extra seven segment displays lying around and a few extra ICs. So I thought it'd be fairly easy to kind of tap into that um, 74 LS 161 and run it through another IC. That way I could kind of see a more a more human decipherable output of what the count for the actual uh, program counter is. So that's what that is. And uh, I'll show another little update that I've been playing with here. So the other update that I've been working on is up here, this breadboard that's uh, just loosely sitting in place. It's definitely not permanently attached or anything like that. So I have these eight buttons here, eight push buttons. And what I did was I took out the the dip switch the dip switches for choosing the memory address and I put this in in its place. It was just to kind of test out an idea because uh, partly I just don't really like flipping the dip switches. That um, I find them they're very stiff and I just have a bit of a hard time flipping them. But I was also kind of wondering, you know, what would it take to kind of build a keyboard of sorts in the style of the 8-bit breadboard computer, you know, not having a, a regular ASCII keyboard, but just, you know, a homebrew button or a homebrew keyboard with your own push buttons on it. And, you know, perhaps have a way to uh, label the buttons so that when I push uh, perhaps this button that might be LDA and maybe this button would be LDI and maybe this button would be out and this one would be, you know, just basically different instructions. But before I got to that step, I thought, well, let me try something a little simpler, which would be to just, you know, select memory addresses. So let me put the uh, breadboard computer on pause here, uh, turn the clock off, and I'll go into programming mode. And let's say that I want to choose address, mm, let's start with address 1. So the way I have this configured at the moment is it goes 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So if I want address 1, I just press that button there, and you can see that I've selected address one and if I want you know address six I would press that button and you know four plus two gives me address six now you might be thinking well don't you need eight more buttons so that you can get to um, you know memory addresses uh, eight nine ten up through fifteen well um, yeah that would be one way to do it but what I decided to do instead was to add this push button over here which would allow me to toggle between the lower four bits and the upper four bits, so sort of programming in one nibble at a time. So when the button is pressed down, I'm using the lower four bits because that made logical sense to me because, you know, down, lower, and when the button's up, it's the upper bits. So if I want to access the upper bits, I just press this toggle button here, and the LED changes over just to kind of give me a visual indicator that I'm now working with a different set of bits. So here, if I wanted, say, ac uh, memory address 13, I would just press that button, and now I've got memory address 13 selected there. And of course, I can go through and go about my programming. Um, I don't know if I'm gonna keep this on the breadboard or not. I, I like the idea, but to make it truly useful, what I would really wanna do would be to perhaps have a three position uh, rotary dial, where when it's in, say, position you know one, the maybe in the leftmost position, I could be, using this keypad of sorts and selecting and programming in memory locations. And then if I to toggled it to the middle, you know, position two, then I could be dealing with the op code. You know, these eight, these, these eight dip switches down here, and it would just be the, the upper four bits of that eight bit, of that eight bit dip switches. So that would be the op code. And then if I toggled it again over to position three, then I would be you know, working with the uh, the lower four bits over there, so um, it would be a, it would be a, a few toggles and dials, but I still think it would be a lot easier and faster 
than you know dealing with dip switches and it doesn't uh get too far away from the idea of this breadboard computer concept you know you're not you know cheating and using a full-blown keyboard and running it through a microcontroller or something like that it's still very much you know very primitive and down to the metal um, what i'm using here for in order to make this work the the eight buttons are feeding into a 74 ls 148 that's that chip there and then out of the 74 ls 148 this is a decoder and so it's turning these eight bits uh, or rather these uh, eight buttons into three bits of data feeding into the 74 ls 161 which instead of a counter i'm just using it as a as a register so because i'm only getting three bits out of the 74 ls 148 that's another reason why i need this toggle switch up here and what that toggle switch does is it just it just sets the uh the fourth bit either high or low so when it's set down like that, it just forces the fourth bit to be a zero. And when it's up like that, it forces the fourth bit to be a one. So I can give you an example of that. So let me put it down. And then when I press, um, you know, zero, one, the zero, one, two, let's say the third button or the fourth one over, you can see I've got a zero, zero, one, one. These are backwards just because the 74LS 161 has them backwards for some reason. So if you look down here, you can see I've got a 0011, although with the light bleed, it's a little bit hard to see. It's a little easier to see it up here. But if I press the same button, but with this button down, or rather with that button up, then you'll see I get the same information, but it just forces that fourth bit to go high, you know, forces that fourth bit there to go high. So yeah, that's what I've been working on. And again, I don't know if I'm going to, you know, keep any of this on the breadboard computer um, what I'm really waiting for at the moment is I'm kind of curious to see uh, when Ben puts out the next video to show how to how he's going to go about wiring up the uh, conditional jump. That's why I'm kind of leaving all this stuff very temporary so that, you know, if I have to rearrange my breadboard, I don't have anything permanently, you know, well, not permanent, but anything cut to length and all that. I can just easily pull this stuff off because uh, I'm trying to stay basically as... as accurate to his build as possible no particular reason other than i just i kind of like what he built and i'm trying to basically recreate it as closely as possible when i go on i do actually want to build another one of these um, and then and when i do that i'll kind of experiment with my own with my own ideas and whatnot but anyway i just wanted to show these a uh, couple little things that i've added and thought you guys might find it kind of interesting